Hey, what's up, Good Life? Thanks for joining me for today's 128 moment. This past Sunday, we continued our series in the Gospel of John called The Gospel, looking at the Last Supper and looking particularly at the struggles of two disciples, Judas and Peter, their struggles with pride. Now, pride is subtle and yet powerful. It sneaks into the nooks and crannies of our heart and it, and it wreaks havoc from the inside out. Our pride creates a most dangerous blind spot in our lives. Whether it leads us to think too much of ourselves or too little of ourselves, in the end, we become the center of our attention. And that makes us our idol. Now, while there are very few, if any of us, would bow down to some graven image, what doesn't, that, that really doesn't mean that our lives are free of idolatry. Whatever is at the center of our attention is our idol, and that idol is going to receive our worship. So why is idolatry such a dangerous sin? Because we were created to worship the one who created us. That our pride, our sin, can cause us to have, though, misplaced worship. And ultimately, our prideful, misplaced worship is almost always focused on ourselves. Now, in his book, Counterfeit Gods, a pastor and author by the name of Tim Keller, he outlines 20 areas of our lives where pride can become idolatry. And we can identify those idols by how we measure our worth. Here are a few examples. Life has meaning or life has worth when I am loved and respected by others. That's approval idolatry. So it rips out our hearts when someone doesn't like us, when there's tension or conflict. We don't know what to do when someone is not happy with us, when we don't have everyone's approval. How about this one? Life has meaning or I have worth when I have power or influence over others. That's power idolatry. So when someone or some circumstance threatens that power, it wipes us out and you crash and burn. How about this? Life has meaning and life has worth because I adhere to my religion's moral code or take part in their activities. That's religion idolatry. My worth is found in my religious activities or affiliations. My life has meaning because of what I do for God. There are 20 of those counterfeit gods that Keller lists out that our pride can lead us to worship. And while I've included all those in the email, consider a few more because from time to time, to one degree or another, I think we probably struggle with most of them. How about this? Life has meaning and worth when life is comfortable. Comfort idolatry. That life has meaning and worth when, I, when, when work is going well. That's, that's work idolatry. Life has meaning and I have worth when I'm recognized for my accomplishments and I'm excelling in my work. That's achievement idolatry. But what happens when all those things are taken away? We end up being shaken to our core. We don't know how to respond. Our anxiety rises as our faith fades, and we're just not sure which way is up. Why? Because our hope, our worth, our pride was wrapped up in an idol other than Jesus, something of worship other than Jesus. Now, pride short circuits the power of the gospel working in us and shining through us. So what's the solution to this pride? The solution is biblical humility, seeing ourselves exactly as God sees us. And what is our reference point? What is our north star for maintaining this biblical humility? It's the cross. When we see the cross, it strips away any feelings of self-importance because it's my sin that put Jesus there. And how can I be the most important thing going if that is true? But also, when I see the cross, it strips me of any feelings of self-loathing. Our debt has been canceled, our ransom has been paid, and our worth is firmly established. God loved us enough to send his son to die in our place. So now, when we think about boasting, we can remember, as Paul wrote to the, to the church at Galatia, that far be it from me to boast in anything except the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Borrowing from that old hymn says, my hope, my worth, my boasting is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Good life. May we be a people who do the same. May our pride melt in the light of his love. May our idols fade as we boast in Christ alone. And may our lives look like the gospel as we seek to live for Christ and to love like Christ. Hopefully that encourages you today and hopefully be able to join us on Sunday as we continue our gospel series looking at his passion and our purpose. We'll be at the church 9, 30, and 11, online at 11 o'clock. And until then, let's go be a people who love enough.